welcome to the Niche to Profit Show. It is episode 32. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And I am your host, Danny Ackerman, also known as the Danny App. And I have spent nearly two decades selling on eBay. And I started when I was like nine. Just saying. Just had to throw that in there. I got a birthday coming up. It's it's, it's uh, on my mind here. Hey, but you know what? Really, I have spent a lifetime in the resale world, and I have gone from being the online yard sale to being the e-commerce business, a profitable e-commerce business, and that is what I'm here to help you with. And on the Niche to Profit show, you're going to see some live listing reviews. We are going to show some hot sales of the week, so you know what to be looking for while you're out there. Uh, and we're going to play another round of pick it or pass it. That is where I show you items in their natural habitat. And you get to decide, did I pick it or did I pass it? We're having a lot of fun with that one. You can win prizes and, and play along. We are live every Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific time on the VegasVideoNetwork.com forward slash live. And we have a live chat there, so you can... Uh, play along. You can even ask questions during the show, interact, maybe get a little plug for your eBay store in there. Hint, hint. Yeah. You want to talk in that chat. And uh, today I brought on two of my very favorite people. They are actually clients of mine and um, they have built a six figure business, e-commerce business without using Amazon. Imagine that. Uh, so they are here today to share with you how they've done that process and uh, some of the, the growing pains and the fun stuff and the not so fun stuff. And uh, welcome, Gary and Sharon Plinus. Hey, Danny. Hey, Danny. How you doing? I finally got your name right after all these months. <laughs> but uh, so okay, Danny. It's hard. As soon as I met you in person, we talked, and you, you gave me the pronunciation. Then I got it. Then I got it. But uh, how are you, you guys? It. Wonderful. And I see you're in the spirit with your awesome yep. Christmas hats. <laughs> we are. So I, let's just kind of start first for people who don't know you. I know all the appsters know you and, and love you. But uh, for those who don't know you, kind of give us a little background of how you got into this whole uh, eBay e-commerce thing. Well, about, about eight years ago, uh, my job um, left. Uh, we were in Indiana at the time, and uh, I had a choice of either moving to Virginia or and we decided to stay in Indiana, raise the kids. And so Gary suggested, hey, you know, you like, you know, you like to buy on eBay. How about we try on selling on eBay? So that was eight years ago. It was about part time on eBay. And about a year and a half ago, we decided that the kids left. We empty nest. We decided to move closer to family in Ohio, and we moved the business, and we went full-time about a year and a half ago. Awesome. awesome. So why did you decide, wh why eBay? It was it just because you were buying there, or was it the type of things that you were selling or wanted to sell? Um, you know, I guess back eight, eight years ago, there really wasn't a whole lot. eBay was pretty much, you know, it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that was really... Yeah, we, we really enjoyed selling or buying on eBay. So, yeah, we decided to sell there, too. Awesome, awesome. I, I, I've just always been an eBay junkie. I swear they, they made that site for me. So it was obvious choice for me, but I'm always curious how other people got over to eBay as opposed to some of the other sites. So you do now a lot of wholesale. Was it always that way? Oh, no. No, initially we started, you know, selling, uh, you know, uh, old toys and old clothes we did some thrifting at the beginning, um, and then about about five years ago, uh, we found out about wholesaling. Found out about the ASD show, a big wholesale show that's twice a year in your neck of the woods in Las Vegas, Danny. Yep. And um, I've been going there for the last five years. Gary started going there uh, a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. and uh, so now we go there and we go to other uh, smaller wholesale shows in the Midwest. But uh, ASD is our big one. So you had told me a story about some gloves, and which I think is a really great uh, learning lesson for a lot of people. Do you mind sharing that story? Sure. We were we were at a wholesale vendor oh about a year year and a half ago, and we saw these gloves, and they were beautiful um, leather and suede and wool, very nice gloves. And so we asked him how much, and the price was good. And the guy goes, "Yeah, but you don't really want them." 
And I said, well, why wouldn't, yeah, of course we want them. And so we tried a couple cases. And uh, this was back probably, like I said, over a year ago. And then last March, we went back and um, we bought a th over a thousand pairs. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. So you must have got a really good price on them. Yeah, we did. We got a really good price. So I, and I love that because. You know, I work with a lot of eBay sellers, and a lot of them are really, really afraid of taking the risk of buying like a thousand of anything. How did you determine that that was a good risk and that you were going to make your money back? Well, of course, we did a lot of research. Um, we use both eBay and Terapeak, and we do some research and we see what other ones have sold for. And um, we knew we saw the gloves in person, we saw they were good quality. And so, you know, and like I said, we had already bought two small cases, just maybe 50 gloves initially, and we sold them so fast. But, you know, and I guess a lot of it was we were buying them in March, and not many people buy gloves in March. And actually, we sat on those gloves for a couple months. You know, figured not too many people would, uh, you know, buy gloves in April or May. But uh, we hired my niece for the summer, and um, one of the jobs she did was to sort those thousand pairs of gloves because they were totally um, just, you know, random. You know, they were all, you didn't know what you're going to get in any, any particular box. Were they leather? Were they kids? Were they men's, women's? And they all had to be sorted by size and color and, and everything. It was, it was a lot of work for her, but uh, she did a great job. And we, and they, they started selling in July. I mean, they, they, people, you know, needed gloves early and we're thinking uh, it's going to be another, another bad winter and, and have been buying gloves steadily since July. You know, I think part of that happens too, because if you go to like a in-person retail store, they're very seasonal. I mean, bathing suits are going to be coming out next month. <laughs> but then <laughs> in like May, you're not going to be able to find a bathing suit. You know, it kind of has that effect. So people now go to online. So probably the same thing with your clubs. Sure. So always good to have that off-season stuff because there's always somebody looking for things that they can't find in the retail stores. Well, and, and it's actually evolving. I think people are going to online first these days, even over retail. Poor retail. Oh, yeah, convenience factor. So it, you and, and I met. And, girl, you talk. Awesome. I talk. <laughs> 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 well, he has Bubba Claws, you know. Yeah, um, Bubba Claws. And I forced them to wear those hats, by the way, you guys. So uh, <laughs> they're very good clients. They, they take good pushes in the right direction. All right. Um, we met at my event called More Fun, Bigger Profits this past May. That was the, and so apparently you you already knew who I was, you know, following things, but I didn't know who you were. And yeah. we did uh, something called a hot seat coaching, and your uh, I, there was an application process. Everybody had to submit things, and I and I pulled yours, and yeah. we got to do some kind of on the spot coaching, and you. I went to your store, and the first thing I saw were those food pillows. And I see you have some behind you, too. Yeah, we do. Can yeah, you, it was... Can it you was, reach, uh, and, reach and show us some of those food pillows? Because I just love those food pillows. Yeah, it was... Uh, you kind of got us, and it was a hot seat, because uh, even though we filled out the, the application, and, you know, there was a couple hundred people there, at least, that could have been in the hot seat, you picked us out of one, out of three or four people, and... Um, you know, he kind of brought us up on stage in front of everybody and started and pulled up our website and our eBay store and started asking us questions and really put us in the hot seat, you know. Um, so it was good, though, because from that moment, we started learning things immediately on ways to uh, market our product a little better, uh, things that we should be doing best offer on that we weren't, uh, free shipping on items that we weren't. Um, you know, from that moment, you were you started to teach us stuff um, that may be obvious to some people, but to us, it was just kind of the way we've been doing it for so long. And we had thousands of items already for sale at that point, mm -hmm. so we were we were kind of like taken aback by a little bit, saying, "Well, this is our store, but we're not niching it. It's got a little bit of everything in it, and we're not going to change because we got too much stuff, and it take a long time to change, and that's a lot of work." Um, so, but, but yeah, it was fun. And at the same time, it was a little nerve wracking as you were, you know, putting our items up on the big screen for everybody to see. And 
um, and critiquing the items and, and the photographs and the listings and the prices and everything. Well, I think it turned out okay, though. Yeah. <laughs> I think it did, yeah. <laughs> so what happened was they ended up joining the Be The App Mastermind, which is a very, very small group of sellers that I work with one-on-one. -on -one and, and we work. But it was really, really funny. Um, you guys, that was one of the things you said. Well, you know, you're not going to try to niche us, are you? And um, I said, well, I, of course I'm going to talk about it, but I don't force anybody to do anything. I, I can't make anybody do anything. Trust me, I can't make anybody do anything. <laughs> and my husband's in there, too. And he, yeah, no, we won't go there. Um, but here's the thing. You guys have been just my absolute all-stars. With Once you figured out that niche didn't mean that you had to change the products that you were selling, you just had to fine-tune who your customer was and build the marketing around that. It was like game on. And... Mm -hmm. You've gone full steam into this. And uh, the food pillows were the thing that I really keyed in on. Those food pillows got me. And I think we talked about the donut. You had a donut right. back yeah. at the event. And uh, we were thinking about all the ways you can market something like a food pillow. And, of course, we came up with find all the police officers. What yeah. a great gift, gag gift for a police yeah, officer, yeah. right? Is a, a, a donut food pillow. And from there, you guys kind of expanded into this idea, too, of, of everything can be about fun and fun products. And even though it's like an ordinary everyday, you know, it's a brush, how can you make it fun? Um, and that's where you've been going with this. And right. um, you've got a standalone website now, which you launched just a few months ago, right? Yeah, I think it was September-ish. September-ish. Yeah. We'll take that. Yeah. And uh, what I love about you guys is that you are very, very good at looking at your numbers and that your time spent on different venues, because you've, you've toyed with different venues and, and gone, but only if it's easy. Only if it's a simple right. process and you can get a return off of it, um, I so. which I think is really important. Um, so tell us for a minute, what has been the most difficult part of fine tuning and rebranding your store? I think um, for us, the, the most difficult part uh, was the marketing uh, and the social media part of it. Um, you know, we're both engineers, we're both technical uh, people, analytical minded, so we're good with numbers, we're good with spreadsheets and reports and graphs and things like that um, to see how our business is doing. Um, we really didn't have a lot of experience on the, the marketing side and the social media side, even at, at, the, at your event in May, and that's not really that many months ago, we had really zero presence in social media. We did not have, we weren't doing Twitter, we weren't doing Facebook, we weren't doing Pinterest. Um, and, you know, through working with you, through your marketing group that you do also, you've really taught us a lot about the marketing side of things and uh, the social media and we're growing all those things and it's just expanding and, and helping us get the brand out and really pushing the fun in everything that we do. And that's really kind of what's helped us out so much. Awesome. I know because we went to ASD together in August um, because ASD is here twice a year. And um, I think you guys kind of looked at it with new eyes because now you looked at uh, what could be considered fun. How can you market it fun, um, which right. is, is part of that niche not being about the product per se as, as much as how you can market it to a certain group of people. Right. And one of the examples is, you know, we've always sold different types of kitchen products. Um, but, you know, when we went to ASD and we even had some interesting stuff before, but, you know, we started looking at different colors. You know, we have like uh, you got some kitchen knives. There's a kitchen set there that has a pink and black handles. Well, not everyone has pink, you know, kitchen utensils. So we started doing oranges and yellows and greens and blue, you know, all these different colors of kitchen utensils. Um, and that's the fun a twist on the kitchen part of it yeah. you know so even though most people don't think of kitchen tools as fun or it can be if you really like to be in the kitchen 
but um, we, we went from a color standpoint, we were able to bring it in to the marketing and, and the fun and the theme and the niche part of everything. Yeah. And I want to tell my husband who's over, or he was in the chat when it started, if he's still there, honey, Funsational Finds has those really cool, colorful kitchen utensils that I want. I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying Christmas list. Um, yeah. And yeah, I mean, that's really it. When I go to your store, I mean, I still, I just, I have so much fun going through and looking at all the, the cool different things that you have. And, um, and for me, you know, I love colors and I, I hate boring stuff. So you're, you have the perfect, you know, store for me to browse and not just look at one thing, but I want to go look at all the different stuff, which is kind of the key. Right. Sure. Well, just like um, we have some umbrellas now and we always had black umbrellas. And um, when we were at ASD, we kept that in mind and we bought some really cool, colorful umbrellas, you know, to add to it. And like you said, we have changed a little bit about what we buy. You know, if it's, you know, you see we have, you know, almost 3,000 different SKUs in our store. And um, some of the ones, like we still have some old tuxedos uh, that, you know, we just need to sell through. You know, um, we're putting them on sale and we're trying to get rid of some things. We won't buy those again. So we have had a mind shift in, in what we've been buying, too. Mm -hmm. And we also we always had a lot of fun products, a lot of right. toys, and plush, and a lot of things for kids, or things behind you. You know, we see and, um, but we have we have focused our buying better recently, and um, you know, tried to stick to the the fun and colorful products. I know I'm looking at that Pokemon Monopoly game and thinking, <laughs> oh my gosh, my son is a Pokemon like maniac, so I might have to go shopping for that. <laughs> So how well, many? He's in the chat. Yeah. I, I know he's oh he's paying attention, <laughs> honey. Make and, a and, list. <laughs> and that might have been one of our our items that um our kids were big Pokemon fans. Yeah. And they're both in college now, and some of the Pokemon things we've made the most money on in our store over the time have been what the kids had. You know, yeah. The vintage things. You know, 15 years ago they played with maybe pet played with that Pokemon mm -hmm. set. You know. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? Like. Pokemon doesn't seem like it's that old, does it? But it is. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Remember it. Is. Oh, so you have, you said you have thousands. You know about how many different SKUs you have, different items? We're, we're up to what about, well, obviously we sell things and then never sell them again. So that's a SKU. But uh, we actually, live SKUs that are available for sale right now, I think it was like 3,100 or something okay. like that about a day or so ago. So. And we, we just list every day, just about every day. We list hundreds of things in a week and some, some weeks, how, um, constantly listing. How do you keep track of all that different stuff? Well, we have a, a database, you know, doing the technical thing. We work with spreadsheets and databases. Mm -hmm. So we started when it was small, when, you know, when Sharon was doing this part-time years ago, we started with the database and we've just been growing it and growing it and growing it. And we're actually using the same database that we, we've used years ago. Um, we just keep growing it. And um, we basically assign a unique uh, part number to every item we buy, and that's a SKU that we can track it on. Um, so uh, we can put it on the shelf. We have shelf locations, box locations. So when I sell something, I can look it up in the database, and I know exactly in our warehouse what rack it's on, what box it's in, and I can get my fingers on it in about 30 seconds. Um, it's very easy to pull our orders. Like, I, like we were talking earlier, we shipped 40 items this morning. Um, you know, it was very, it, it takes longer to pack the items up than it does to go pull, find the items in our 3,000, 3,600 square foot warehouse, you know, because um, we have, you know, tons of product out there right now. Because when they say 3,100 SKUs, you know, some of those items, well, I have 20 or 50 of those items sure. in stock. Sure. So we have tens of thousands of products, you know, in our warehouse, in our backyard. We actually have a warehouse in our backyard, too, uh, which uh, is very convenient. You don't want all that in your house. It takes a little space. Just a little. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what database program do you do you use? You're being asked here. That's uh, Stephen just, Bond um, over in the chat. You guys know Stephen. Yeah, it's, it's just a simple, um, it's a, a Microsoft Access database. Um, but, you know, you could use any database. It's a real simple database with the, you know, we just kept adding the fields that were necessary. But the basic fields we used were, you know, a SKU number that was unique. 
uh, description of, or which is usually the title that we use in eBay. We try mm -hmm. to keep them the same so we can find it quicker. Um, and a stock location, quantity, uh, price, uh, where we bought it from, and when we bought it. And so we can basically keep track. We can we can run some reports off of that uh, inventory reports. Uh, how much did we spend this year? How much did we sell this year? Um, you know, which vendors or which places that we bought things are selling the quickest for the most profit, things like that. It's very handy, but it's uh, just a same, simple database will work, but we use uh, Microsoft Access. That's awesome. I'm a, our whole last show last week is about was about inventory management because I'm in the middle of unpacking and getting moved. And, um, and really, we've got the inventory room pretty much done. I've, I did a physical inventory of about a thousand different items and made sure we we had those on hand um and so i i, I want to just reiterate how important that is to have some sort of a system where you can see what's sold know exactly where it is go pull it and pack it because i mean that's valuable time spent searching for things if you if you don't have that in place and i can't tell you how many times i'm like hearing and seeing out on facebook oh i spent hours looking for this item that I sold and I can't find it. I mean, that is hours lost, which just, you can't do that. So awesome that you have that system. Um, so what would you say is the hardest part of running the business with like just the two of you? Cause I know it's just the two of you for the most part. So what's the hardest part? Is that your, you want to answer that or, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you know, everything is hard. I mean, you got to manage your time. Um, yeah. You know, time management is 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 important uh, because, you know, not only are we trying to list, we're trying to pick. You know, we're taking photographs. You know, Sharon takes great photos. She's got she a little does. Set up. Um, she gets better every day. Um, but you know, then you know, we got to pack our orders. We want to list new stuff. We want to make sure we have time for marketing and social media. Um, and just keeping you know track of all the day to day stuff. Like right now, um, with the holidays, we spend a lot of time you know picking and packing. Obviously, you do yeah. a lot more now than you do in the summer. Um, so our listing is a little bit slower, but we've been beefing up you know our listings for a while. So that's why we have so many. Uh, but we are still listing. I mean, we listed some stuff yesterday. We listed more stuff today. We're going to do some more tomorrow. It's all photographed and ready to go. So it's a constant you know. It's just managing, you know, basically got a lot of balls in the air and you're managing lots of things at once. So time management is important, um, prioritizing your tasks and what you need to do. But the thing is with, with uh, what's nice about this and, and being your own boss basically is we have a flexible schedule. You know, if we have to take a day off or take half a day off to go do something uh, for family or doctor appointments or whatever, uh, we're able to do work around that real easy, um, you know, with the business. So that's real nice. So can you guys, and, and, I'll, and I'll ask both of you this, you can both put in on this. What is one big tip you can give to the viewers to just take away that something they can do in their business, make things easier? I guess my, my job in the business is um, I'm, I've been constantly running auctions evaluating prices you know you hear some people say oh you know my stuff isn't selling you know I'm not doing that well you know I'm constantly out there tweaking things and uh, the big tip is you know you you have to you have and, and we have you know 3,000 almost 3,000 items different items and um, you know it's it's you got to stay on top of your product your pricing um, your, your inventory um, so that, that, that's really, you know, what I would tell people is, you know, things are constantly changing in the e-commerce world and um, you just got to, you know, got to stay up with it. Good. Gary? Um, since I am the official shipping department, um, I think one thing that's good is you want to take advantage of all the free shipping materials you can get from the post office. Amen. And order them online. They'll bring them right to you. Um, and especially this time of year, uh, whether you use their their boxes or labels or not, um, you got to make sure you have plenty of product to ship with, or plenty of envelopes, print plenty of boxes, because um, you know you got to plan ahead and get more than what you think you need. Because 
you know, you never know what kind of orders you're going to get or how many orders you're going to get. And so you want to make sure you can ship that item out quickly to the customer and not have to be searching for it's bad enough to have to search for an item if you can't find it. Now, if you got to search for a box to put it in, that's, you know, twice as much work. So you, gotcha. you want to get organized with your shipping materials and make sure you have the, the way to ship things. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming on. And anybody who wants to go do a little Christmas shopping, be sure you head over to funsationalfinds.com. And you know what? Get on their newsletter. They have one of the most fun newsletter. You put a little joke, a little pun in there. Oh, no, it, you, you call it a, you don't call it a pun. Um, yeah, pun intended. Pun intended. That's right, because it's yeah, fun so intended. It's like, no, like, you know, pun, yeah, so it's intended intended fun. <laughs> but anyway, loads of fun. They throw some fun, you know, little party recipe things in there. So go get on their, their email. How can they sign up for your email list? Well, I'm going to make sure there's one. There's a link on our website. I think, <laughs> I you, think you there got is. me off guard here. I don't know where it is. <laughs> yeah. um, thought we had that popping up for them just Easy peasy, but it, it we'll make sure it, uh, we'll make sure it's there when you go over there. Yeah. Uh, go over there, get on their list, go do a little Christmas shopping. They're awesome, awesome people to to buy from, and they are appsters. Uh, so if anyone wants to come on over and join the Danny App Academy, you get access to them. They're in there. You get to ask questions. <laughs> um, sorry, had to throw my little shameless plug in there too, uh, but you really. <laughs> really enjoy having you guys there and uh, being part of your continued success. And we'll be talking soon. Thanks oh. for yes. having us on yeah, your show, Danny. Lot, Danny. All right. And we're going to take a quick break and come back and check out some listings that just don't seem to be moving. Millions of online sellers are looking for one identity to use in thousands of platforms. E-Rated manages your reputation by importing unlimited social media, marketplace, and behavioral data. It reveals your cross-platform performance, compares it with competitors, and calculates your e-worth. And it gives you the tools you need to improve sales and find room to grow. Discover your e-worth and your own reputation that is shareyourreputation.com. And if you use the code Danny Deal, you can get 20% off any of their professional services, which includes um, going over and using that widget on Shopify and WordPress websites. All right. How about we do a little Why Won't They Buy? <laughs> All right, let's see. First up, let me pull up the screen here. Uh, this comes in from Ann Pearson. She says, these will not sell no matter what I do. Thanks, Danny. Okay, we're going to help you with that. Um, this is a King Queen coverlet quilt bedspread. And that's going to be my first question. Okay, which is it? Which is it? Because those are three different things. And I think that is the first thing. Remember, you guys, we cannot throw the net out there and try to capture every single fish <laughs> that might swim into it. We need to be very specific. We need to put the right bait on the hook and throw that out there, a single thing. Um, so I would say looking at this, I think most people would call this a bedspread. A quilt is, is usually something that's a little thicker. Um, so I would go with bedspread on this. And let's take out the coverlet and quilt. It's going to help in the eBay search too. Uh, because you could be telling eBay, hey, I don't really know what this is. And so therefore, when somebody who's shopping absolutely knows what they're looking for, eBay's going to go, eh, I'm not sure we want to put this listing up there. So that's the first thing. I would change this title to, uh, and I make sure I say it right, I wrote it down here, uh, Fuchsia Pink. Now, the reason I'm saying Fuchsia Pink is that when I went and did a little research, most people are searching pink or even you might even say purple with this one because it's, you know, Fuchsia is kind of could go either way. Um, so either use pink or purple, but still use the word Fuchsia and then put the measurement closer up because that's how people are searching more for these because in the stores, that is right there on the packaging of most of these things. So they can see, oh, yeah, I saw it at the store. It was a 110 by 96. They know that number. 
Um, so I'd re- rewrite that title as Fuchsia Pink Bedspread 110 by 96. And I'd say Fitz King Queen and then put the hand stitched at the end. Uh, I wouldn't put King Queen at the beginning because what people are really looking for is the color and then what it is first. That's how they're searching. And then they're going to make sure it fits whatever they're uh, putting it on. Now, here's the good news. And I love being able to say this. You guys in the chat, you know what I'm going to say, right? Oh, that price is just way too low. Way too low. Um, If somebody wants a nice, good quality bedspread, they're going to question $39.99 for a king size bedspread. They're going to be ready to pay more money. Uh, So I would advise that you increase that price somewhere around $79.99. Add best offer. Add best offer because then if they come in at, you know, 50 or 60, I can almost certainly know that you're going to take it because you're willing to take $39.99 right now. Um, So go ahead, raise that price up, add best offer. And here's the biggest thing. I think that's keeping this from getting sold We've only got one picture, one picture. um, I want more pictures. And I know sometimes that can be hard, but what might be happening here is this is a um, stock photo. Stock photo, meaning uh, the manufacturer took this photo and offers it to people who are selling this item new. So a stock photo can add a little element of distrust in a potential buyer They want to actually know that you have this item. That is a concern for eBay buyers. Uh, Unfortunately, not every eBay seller out there is as savvy and ethical as all of you watching this show. Some of them just want to like get money and not deliver the goods. Let's just put it that way. Um, what's a king queen? Stephen Bond asks. I've heard of king and queen, but yeah, what she's trying to say is that it, it covers both a queen and a king. Probably on a king bed, it, you know, it's going to go lower to the floor, but on a queen bed, it, a bedspread, still other way around. Scratch that. Reverse. Uh, the queen will not go. Will go all the way. Gosh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. It's going to fit a little differently, depending, but it will go on a queen size bed. And a bedspread um, typically does not go all the way to the floor. So that's not something that's going to hinder it being sold. Um, but if somebody wants to put it on a king size bed, it's it's still going to fit. He's got it. Good. I am so glad because I didn't want to have to repeat that. All right. Um, so pictures, pictures, pictures. So even if this is an item that's new in the package, show that picture of that item new in the package. Show that you have it in hand. Show them what's going to show up in their mailbox. That is what people want to see. So um, also, really, you guys, only one image like this is going to squash you on search. eBay's algorithm is such that they're looking for items with more than three pictures. More than three pictures. So, I don't know, throw some crazy close-ups and stuff in there if you have to, but get at least three pictures in on those listings, guys. Okay. Now I'm going to give you a little bonus advice on this one. Um, because when I went into your store there, and I noticed you're selling a lot of stuff, just way too cheap, way too cheap. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You need to come on over, join us at the Danny App Academy. We are going to make you so much money by just raising your prices. Um, We can absolutely help you with that so that you aren't leaving money on the table. Because believe it or not, not every buyer out there is looking for the cheapest. They really aren't. I can assure you, I know many people who search by highest first because they're more concerned about quality, trusting that they're going to get what they buy, And knowing that they're not buying some cheap crap. (laughs) Let's just put it that way. Um, No, but really, the buyers are not as concerned about that low, low price. You guys, you can't play this race to the bottom game. This is a losing game for anybody who's playing it. Dropping, 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 dropping prices to beat your competitor. Oh, ouch. That's going to go nowhere fast. And you don't have to play it. Um, So we can help you with that. So thank you for submitting that. 
I look forward to uh, seeing this get sold now uh, once you make a few changes with that. Um, so got a question over in the chat. She asked, is Danny app, a, a, is Danny, a, it's Danny app Academy. Is that different than the appsters? No, that's just what my appsters name themselves. The, the, the people who are in the Danny app Academy, they call themselves appsters. So I call them appsters. So that's just, that's the members and, and appsters rock. Look, it's right here. It's proven. If it's in writing, it's true, right? And my, and my appsters are the awesomest. And the thing is, you guys, yes, I'm over there. Yes, I'm answering questions. But you get a whole community of appsters who can help you answer these questions and steer you on the right path because everybody is is doing the same thing. We're all trying to get through all of this stuff that gets so confusing and so befuddling and overwhelming and just streamline and get your business rocking and selling. All right. Next, we have, doo, 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 doo. there it is. All right. We've got a Vera Bradley trimmed Vera traveler bag, Night Hounds tooth black. Uh, what Anne Marie Marciano says about this is, I have had this one for approximately six months, has been on sale twice, is currently at 20% off. Uh, Amazon is selling the same bag for $105. I am now at $80. Have had over 350 views and seven watches currently. It's Christmas and it will not sell. What can I do? Well, we can help you with that. So glad you wrote in on this one. I did a little research on this because I am I am not a handbag seller myself or travel traveler bag seller myself. I do know the name Vera Bradley, so very good that you use that as the first word in your title because I'm sure that's what's getting you the views. Now, what's concerning is people are coming over, they're not buying. So I got a couple of tips for you on this. One of the most immediate things you can do is since you have watchers and since you've had so many views, add best offer. Boom, right there. The price might not be quite right for them to, to make that move. So I would add best offer. The other thing I noticed about your listing is it's not coming up with that little six month PayPal credit kind of thing that happens. And I don't know what the price point is for that. I have not been able to determine right where that breaking point is. But if Amazon is offering this for $105, you do that too. You do that too. Bump up that price, but add best offer. And here's the other thing I would say is get rid of that charging shipping, push the shipping up into the item and do free shipping. That's also going to give you a bump. It's also going to encourage those watchers. As I am telling you guys, when people see shipping broken out separately, whether or not it's reasonable, whether or not it's the exact shipping, their brain goes, er, shipping, that's a waste of money. I don't want to pay that on top of $80. Really? This is what the brain's doing. But if they see the item for $129.99 with free shipping, oh, there's, there's a good time for that. Hallelujah. I know you like that one. Yeah. There you go. Thank you, Scott. Um, th yes. Their brain goes, oh, that's the price. I can buy this. It's, it's psychology is a funny thing, you guys, and you can play it. You can play on these buyers' psyche and do this stuff. Um, here's the other little thing I noticed about this. The picture. Picture is really lined up. You've got the plain white background, but it's not popping for me. It's a little dark. So I would take that, run it through like Picasso. It's a free program. And hit that auto contrast and make that picture just pop off the page just like boom there it is and i mean believe it or not that the little darkness of the color that can affect somebody's buying motivation um they may really really want that bag you got seven watchers on that so um i don't know how long you got that sale running i'd probably like end that sale just end it yeah it's got 60 okay yeah don't don't renew that sale if it sells great if not don't renew that Add the best offer in the free shipping and fix that picture up. Now, the other thing is the title. 
I would simplify the title because when I looked over at Amazon, you know what the title says over on Amazon? It says Vera Bradley trimmed Vera traveler bag or something very short and concise like that. So I would call this Vera Bradley trimmed traveler bag, midnight hound's tooth, take the rest of it off, take the rest of it off. Um, the number, all that other stuff, put that down in item specific. So if somebody does search for it, it's still going to show up. Yeah. So two schools of thought on the pricing. You want 80. If you're going to go 80, go 79.99. Again, one of those little psychological tricks that retail plays and we all fall for it. Otherwise, nobody be doing it because the big, massive retails, your grocery stores, everybody does it. You, you, they're not ending that stuff on the zero, zero dollars. They're ending it on a 99, a 95, a 97, or whatever that funky little number is you like to use. Use the funky little number. Because to the brain, 79.99 looks enormously cheaper than 80. I know. I don't get it. I don't know why it still works, but it really does. Um, but that is if you're going to break that shipping out separately is where I'd go with that. But preferably, you know what? Go $99.99 with free shipping and best offer. I'm telling you, it's going to get it sold. Oh, and oh, and just FYI, Amazon has the price lowered to $79.99 right now. So, so they're not selling it at the $105. So I hope that makes you feel a little better. Um, it's, yeah, and that, you know, you get the free shipping, then you're competitive with that Amazon Prime shopping experience over there, too, that. It's just one of those things when there's a lot of something out there and there's a lot of these bags out there, then you have to start competing and you have to compete on the psychology of it. You know, I don't want to see you just keep dumping the price, but you can mess with this psychologically. Now, I hope none of your customers are watching this show and hearing me tell you this. So it's all good, though. All right. So how about we jump to some hot sales of the week? Wow. There is there is Scott making fun of my little music again. You know, all that means is he's showing his age. You know, that's like a 70s thing. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, yeah. There you go. Yeah. All right. This comes in from Lori Brill. Lori is new to the hot sales. So awesome, Lori, for submitting this. She says... In October, I bought a huge box of troll dolls for a total of $10. There were 73 trolls in that box, so, and I'm glad she broke the math out for me. 13 cents each. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Brownie points for that. Uh, to date, she says she's had sales of $177.87 on them, including this one that sold this week. Found at a, at a church rummage sale. Right place, right time. Uh, this is an alien troll doll trick or treat. That's crazy. Fifty nine ninety nine. Fifty nine ninety nine. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, trolls. It's one of those things from the you know, I think eighties. Eighties is when the trolls were really hot, and we all know some of us are trying to relive that childhood from the eighties there. All right, so good job, good job. Oh, what a surprise. Matt Pinkish has a hot sale this week. I know, this really startles you. But no, wait, here's why I had to share this one. Because Matt wrote something really cool. And a little hint, if you want your, your hot sale shared on the show, write something cool. Um, he says, Danny has converted me to being a niche seller. I make more money when I spend my time in my niche than in others. I stopped going to thrift stores over a year ago. This is one of the last thrift store Goodwill purchases that has sat in an attic for the last year and a half forgotten about. He paid a dollar. No, 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 no. Sorry. I can't see my own writing. I paid $18 for it. That's a little different. And figured that I'd list it around Christmas time. 
Started the auction at $89 and would have been happy with that. But no, no, that is not where it ended. Looking at his pictures, he was determining that glare from the light smile. Oh, smile emoticon is how it writes. Uh, The glare from the light. uh, At the time I'm posting this, it has three and a half hours left, but it looks like I'm going to do just fine. And just fine, you did. $180. Dollars. $180. Oh, that is crazy. Oh, and if anybody is in the market for a chainsaw or, hey, you want a free chainsaw blade, head on over. Oh, gosh, Matt, are you in there? I don't know the name of your um, your Facebook page, but he's got a contest going on. Shoot, I shouldn't have started that without knowing what it was. I'm pretty sure it's the name of your store, though, isn't it? Matt, where are you? Somebody share it. I know one of the appsters there knows it. They'll put it over there in the chat, and then I'll read it off. That was so silly of me, wasn't it? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Oh, Jackie Jessup Kimmer. Hope I'm getting that right. What do we got here? And I wanted to share this because uh, another one of my appsters, Christina Lakin, also does really well with these uh planning books. This is an international barfly membership book, which I guess is a planner, like a leather planner. Uh, wow. $305. She paid $3.99. That is crazy. And one more quick one. One more quick one. This is from Sharon Plinus, who you just saw uh, she went on a day with Danny with me in Ohio recently, and this is one of the items she bought. She sent me a whole list of all of everything that she sold from that day with Danny. Um, bought this for, she bought two of them for $35. It is a Disney Winnie the Pooh Tigger stocking hanger, and uh, she paid $2 each, sold them for $35 bucks each. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. You guys, this is just a, uh, we can only do a small sampling of these hot sales if you want to go see the entire list give yourself some ideas of things to be looking for and what they sell for head over to the danny app facebook group and uh, join in every sunday we do the hot sales week and you could be picked to be featured here right on the show for thousands of people to come over and like check out your listings and all just saying all right we have a new sponsor to the show I'm very excited about uh, that is going to help you guys so much. Uh, and well, here, see for yourself. Nothing is as exciting as watching your online store grow from an idea into a successful venture. But somewhere along the path, you'll inevitably have to navigate the agonizing maze of sales tax compliance. Unfortunately, it isn't easy. States, counties, and cities can all have different sales tax rates, which makes it frustrating to determine when and how much sellers must collect, which states are owed, and how much to remit back to each state. Keeping up with it all is extremely time-consuming, and it distracts you from what's really important. That is why we developed TaxJar, a perfect solution for online merchants that completely automates sales tax compliance, giving you peace of mind so you can focus on growing your business. How does it work? Set up an account, and in just a few minutes, you can connect TaxJar to all of the different platforms you sell through, including your online shopping cart of choice. TaxJar will then collect your sales data and automatically create state-by-state reports that show the taxes that have been collected for each jurisdiction. Every day, the reports are automatically updated with your latest sales, so when the time comes, you can easily file them, or let TaxJar auto-file them for you, so you don't miss any important deadlines. And that's it. TaxJar is super easy to use and requires no special tax knowledge. If you ever have questions, you're in capable hands. Our awesome support team is standing by to help you succeed. After this one-time setup, get back to growing your business and let TaxJar handle your sales tax nightmare. Sign up for a free 30-day trial and get started today. TaxJar is an amazing service, you guys. Takes all that funky sales tax stuff and they take care of it for you. And we're going to have them on here as a guest in a few weeks. Um, And so be sure you have any questions about that. You start sending them in to me, we're going to ask them and get those answered. I found Matt's Facebook page. 
<laughs> Matt's equipment repair. Of course it is. Of course it is. Uh, so he's got this really, really cool promotion going over there. You can see uh, win a free chain for your saw. Just post a picture of your saw. That's all he asks. Just post a picture of your saw. Uh, and you can win a free chainsaw blade. There we go. That might have been good around Halloween, too. You know, all those chainsaw massacre. No, we're just kidding. <laughs> okay. Hey, guess what it's time for? Pick it or pass it. Oh, this is becoming my most favorite part of the show. I have so much fun with this. Um, so last week, I had... The fake bread or faux bread, however you would like to talk about it. There it is. $3.99. And there was about six or seven pieces in there. Um, so, yeah. So those of you who said I picked it, absolutely I picked I don't know. I have this obsession with fake food. I don't know what it is. Uh, but the stuff sells. It sells. I'm telling you, it sells. Uh, I just want to show you, like, really quick here, before we go into uh, the uh, entries, I'm going to pull up the sold listings. Not just, yes, I picked it, and it's listed. But let me show you what this stuff sells for. Now, it's not crazy huge prices, but here's the thing about this bread. Number one. It is so lightweight, costs nothing to ship, super easy, not breakable, easy to store. And the thing that I do is I get a lot of fake fruits and vegetables and breads and cheeses and whatever. It is hit sell similar, sell similar, sell similar, um, change a few things, boom, it's listed. So it's easy. It's got that easy factor. But I'm just going to show you right here how, how this stuff sells. I almost would have bought this one here, whoever the seller is, I'd have bought that and split that up. Um, so lots of sellers are selling this, but when you get down to like the onesie twosie pieces, look at that, look at that. Somebody paid $35 plus $7 shipping for a piece of sponge bread, fake sponge bread. Um, $37 for this like Cracker Jack fake bun bread. The single pieces, you guys don't lump it up like this. Don't lump it up. I'm telling you because people will pay here. 20 bucks plus $10 shipping for two fake loaves. And you can get these for like 99 cents a piece. I mean, that is easy money. That is easy money, my friends. Now, I tend to list them individually in the $9.99 to about $14.99 price range on these. And like I said, I do that because it's so easy to like sell and ship these. So I don't mind doing it. So yes, I picked it. So let me get my... Handy dandy little stagecoach over here. And oh, I guess I better dump out last week's entries there. That's called being prepared right there, I'm telling you. All right, so who do we have this week? We have. I put them all on one cheat sheet to help me, you guys. All right, we have um, Katerina won last week. So, Katerina. Uh, you guessed that I passed it, so you wouldn't have got in, but you did guess it was fake fruit. But we can't put you in this week. Here's the deal, you guys. Yeah, you got to wait two weeks. Got to wait two weeks to enter again. It's all good. All right. Dova Smith. Dova said uh, Danny picked it, and it was fake bread. You are in there. Uh, let's see. We got Sharon Odenal. I'm not sure of the technical name, but it's that real bread that you bake and then lacquer and preserve. Nope, I can't give it to you because it wasn't that. It wasn't that. I know what you're talking about, and it wasn't that. That's a lot heavier, and I probably wouldn't mess with that. Uh, but you did say I picked it, so you are going in the drawing. And Anne Marie Marciano, it looks like different types of artificial bread. If it is, then I would say you picked it, and I would say you are entered twice. Fake bread for bakery display. Or staging photo art. Passed it. No, 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 no. I picked it. But you're spot on. That's who buys this. That's who buys this. People doing photography, staging, props, theater. They go to eBay to find this stuff. Uh, faux, fake bread, rolls, croissant baguettes, etc. Danny not only picked it, but she will price it high. No, 
Uh, not too high, but Pam, you know me. You got two entries. Uh, Lisa, you picked it. It's staging props, faux bread, a bag under $3, and you'll save it until you have enough to warrant a combined listing with, like, faux grapes and cheese and maybe even a faux bottle of wine. Is there such a thing? Hmm, I haven't seen a faux bottle of wine yet. Anyway, bringing it into the $40 to $50 price range, you could sell this um, for half of that now, most likely. And and while this did not go on my Utterly Good Stuff ID, it did get listed on my super secret ID, which, I, in all honesty, guys, I don't share it because then it messes up the organic search on items. Um, that is why I don't share that one with you. But, but yeah, it was priced cheap. Not too cheap. I'm going to make some good money. Here we go. Ooh. Scott says, lift up the box so they can actually see you draw the name. Oh, Pam Waldron. Pam Waldron. <laughs> and what do you win? Well, we have this. Oh, wait. Scott insists that I show you this part. <laughs> he says that's harsh. <laughs> He likes it when I show you this part first, uh, which says it is the Vegas Video Network. I give him a hard time, but he kn- but he knows if I didn't, then I probably didn't like him. So, all right, here's what you can wear: the I Got Nitchy watching the Niche to Profit show T-shirt. Here, um, you gotta just uh, send me your size and your shipping address, or you might prefer the Niche to Profit tote where like if you go to estate sales yard sales and you need to put stuff in something works perfect or i think i just only have one left of the coveted minion tote bag which is what katarina chose last week i'm just saying all right love my minions oh you guys i cannot believe we are through another show and we got to give you this week's pick it or pass it all right here's your clues You won't find any of the materials for this driving down the strip in Las Vegas. Number two, this could be the highlight of a certain decor. Number three, priced at just $14.99 with 40% off. Was it a steal or not? Send your answers to -to niche2profit at vegasvideonetwork.com. niche2profit at vegasvideonetwork.com. Send those in. You could be a winner next week. All right. And come on over to the Danny App Academy. You heard me mention it through the show. It is where we help you be a better eBay seller, a better e-commerce seller. We answer your questions and make it so that you can make more money with less stress. And uh, it's a whopping 10 bucks a month. Oh, but wait, it gets better. Use the code SHOW. Seven show seven. Come join us for a week and check it out. Make sure it's something you want to do. Happy to have you over there. And you guys, be sure you go check out the replays of the show over on iTunes and please leave us a five star review. We love that. Check it out on YouTube, either on the Vegas Video Network channel or the Danny app channel. On the Vegas Video Network channel, you can see some of the other shows as well. Uh, We're also on Roku, Stitcher, TuneIn, Chromecast, Apple TV, Google TV, Fire TV, and of course, the VegasVideoNetwork.com. Yes, we are. All right, guys, that, that concludes another show. Next week, I have a Christmas present for you. It is gonna be all your questions. What do you want answered? What do you want to know? We're going to do the normal, you know, why won't they buy and all that. But really, it's all going to be devoted to what you need help with to go into 2016 full bore. Make it the business of your dream. Send those questions to niche to profit at vegasvideonetwork.com. Niche to profit at vegasvideonetwork.com right there on your screen should be. And he says, it is. See, that's the faith I have in my director, that he's just making it happen. With that, guys, we will see you next week. Now, go be profitable and make it fun.